can we for a minute think about the bad apples theory and the corruption cases that are always linked to procurement in Kenya. Five, I can mention five. KPLC, KEMSA, NOS, Chicken Wilbaru. Okay, who are the first people who are sent off? UME, Procurement and Supply Chain Practitioners. Are we the villains? Are we victims? And what happens should you report? And who do you report to even? Okay? Because should you report? I, I've actually heard of a, quite a number of people who've actually tried to report. Eh? You report, you're either demoted or transferred. You're in Nairobi, shoo, Turkana, Lodo, Baringo, somewhere in Kajiado. Okay, so when it comes to the upcoming Kizim election, and I think this is actually an emerging theme, people are asking those who are actually vying for the council member positions, our learned friends, our peers, and our elders, what happens to us? Because I can we can actually bet this year there's going to be a scandal and a procurement professional is going to be mentioned. In that case, is it the bad apples theory in which it is this particular person who is actually corrupt and needs to be removed? Or are we actually in a systemic kind of environment in which nothing works? So why is everyone blaming procurement or is it a vehicle that is actually being used by other people and we are actually blamed for it so as procurement and supply chain professionals it's about time we change this narrative this is issue number one okay issue number two before we get into issue number two, let's have a look at this. The Ethics and Anti-Corruption uh, Commission, the SEC, has obtained orders uh, from the High Court freezing cash and assets worth over 216 million shillings belonging to Peter Mainanje here, a senior supply chain manager at the Kenya Electricity Transmission Company Limited, Ketraco. The anti-graft body in the freeze orders granted by Judge Esther Miner of the Anti-Corruption and Economic Crimes Division in the High Court listed the properties it holds are proceeds of uh, crime. They include 30 five parcels of land worth 78.4 million nine motor vehicles valued at 19.4 million shillings and a total of 75.8 million shillings in four bank accounts so villains it is isn't it we are the villains think about it 216 million so the question goes where are the junior supply chain managers where are the suppliers? Okay, because if we're going to stick to this, yes, then it means that this person has to be dealt with as an individual. Yes, remove that one person, like I mentioned in part one. However, if you are eating and I partake too, and someone else, outside of the organizational walls does too then it means it's a network issue collective action means that um i cannot report you because i'm also doing the same who is going to actually take some action when it comes to taking us to jail etc because i cannot report you if i'm also eating with you can i yes so but if it is also an institutional problem meaning and you know that's the culture and you see it just means everything is not working and if you've stolen for example 400 million what is the bail that is going to be set is it going to be four million because i can pay that okay 
go pay some uh, friends around me some few millions i already have land i can get some more and just disappear isn't it and that has been done and funny enough i can even decide to run for office but we have to assume that i am innocent until proven guilty isn't it the bad apple however that has a bad reflection on those who are not corrupt so it's a cyclic kind of situation so if we're going to take disciplinary actions on these ones it has to set an example for the rest not to do the same am i just ranting but then you have to ask yourself right now uh young young children believe that should they come into the supply chain profession they're going to get rich yes so it is not a matter of putting you know severe disciplinary actions okay because that is only one component so people need to start thinking out of the box and thinking proactively so if someone in form two right now is focused we I don't even need to go to school why i want just to get into procurement i want to become a supplier get my money get rich live my life okay then how are you going to actually nurture this person after they if should they continue the education to the university level are you not going to start hammering them with ethics a ethics b <laughs> come on come on you can't teach ethics and believe that it alone will work yes to a certain point teaching about ethics works but not there should be complementary measures put in place maybe i'm wrong again maybe i'm wrong but so that i do not digress yes we do have incidences in which the supply chain personnel are involved however there's a lot of there's a lot of demonization of their profession we do have innocent people we do have external forces so let's not put the supply chain professionals mm -hmm. in a cage yet it's more than the micro macro and meso issue let's go into issue number with the, the low cost uh, training programs costing 10,000, 15,000, as opposed to what we found when we got at the council, where programs were running at 90,000, 80,000, and the like. Issue number two, which is actually being addressed by several candidates, is the aspect of CPD points. Okay, there's someone who spoke about this so passionately yesterday. I believe um, his name is Mr. Tingos. I hope I got that right. <laughs> in case i didn't uh, forgive me however he mentioned that it may cost approximately 60k okay so if you're a graduate and still not working you have to pay for that so that you actually have a practicing license where do we get that from okay where do we get that from and if we actually get it for example um in july it is only valid up to december 31st the next year when it comes when we come to january you need to pay for another license so people are actually questioning on whether that is something that's workable or we need to actually change that that is issue number two. issue number issue number three unemployment okay so we have some um aspiring council members who brought this issue up and i'm going to run down some of the issues number one 
maybe we have high unemployment issues in procurement because number one we don't actually utilize and capitalize on mentorship number two the need of appreciating soft skills and just setting up our cvs number two pause pause this year there was there was this case in which there was a job advert job advert procurement and supply chain guess what guess what the requirements had nothing to do with procurement and supply chain uh, that's why we're also unemployed supply chain is not acknowledged let me repeat that supply chain is not <laughs> acknowledged are we actually saying that we do have some institutions which do not have procurement or supply chain yes in the public and private sector but you see when it comes to the private sector it's another thing in that case, a business owner might not see the need of having a procurement practitioner or supply chain practitioner, depending with the industry, the, the organizational size, etc. However, when it comes to the public sector, you can imagine that we do have some ministries that do not have, or some branches of ministries, let me correct that, huh? <laughs> which do not have the supply chain function i'm not going to mention them i believe that uh, for purposes of uh, uh, let me just not get into trouble with that but number three number three which is going to tie up with issue number two is the need of having a look at our national supply chain and management professional framework so in that case it's talking about training competencies salaries etc when it comes to salaries then you have to look at what is your job group what is your um for example experience etc but all this has to be lined up with the current market trend and right now, past COVID, came in cold chain. We are now talking about blockchain, internet of things, artificial intelligence. Where are we? An issue that we need to appreciate is the need of mapping of the profession. Our job descriptions cannot be tied to, okay, the procurement process. We are above... 6,000 members. Believe in me, and I believe most of us do interact. We have experts in green supply chain, strategic sourcing, negotiation, engineering, project management. My friend, when it comes to mapping, then you need to understand that it cuts across quite a number of industries. We cannot be talking about food supply chain, okay? We cannot be talking about health supply chain. Yet, when it comes to the policies in place, job descriptions, etc., someone somewhere believes that all we are tasked to do, okay, is to manage a tender. That is so wrong. That is so wrong. And when it comes to salaries, I don't know if, if you people had the chance to actually read the, say, PS um, salary guides or whatever that document was. Huh? Compare that with Kenya. You would, you would actually feel like you need to leave the country. Yet we do have some certain private organizations in Kenya. In Kenya. In which, should you land there, my friend, you can you can show to great heights. Great heights. And we need to have conversations about this. Because supply chain has to be appreciated as a strategic function. But we cannot do that if we cannot be able to map this profession. Unless I'm wrong, because I do know we have experts in quite in, in so many in so many organizations. Believe you me, sometimes I feel like I need to go back to school. So, how many of us have CIPS? How many of us have actually pursued CPSP? 
Do we need both? The question is why? Because if we are to actually be confident, okay, in CPSP, we shouldn't be running for CPS unless, and this is where I know you know the answers. I know you know the answers, but I want to hear it from you. Why is it we have to get this certification and also go for CPS? Is it for our resumes? And if it is for our resumes, then what is it saying about this other one? Okay. So these are some of the issues that were brought about. Now, if we are to talk about the school which is coming up, that is a whole different issue because when it comes to academia, we need to actually appreciate that we do have our professors, okay, our lecturers, who can actually guide us when it comes to some of these issues. I'm telling you, learning from these people is quite humbling and quite a nice experience. Why? Why am I saying this? It's because if you can just Google, okay, supply chain education, you're going to be amazed by the results you're going to get. In Kenya, we are talking about, um, for example, warehousing. When it comes to warehousing, eh? we are talking about teaching warehousing textbooks okay against a fellow person who is being taken to a warehouse is being allowed to interact with the softwares to design a warehouse so what are we saying that is also another issue to be considered now we have three camps three camps so we do have two camps and one independent candidate who are actually running for the chairman council chairman position and the independent candidate is mr geoffrey kimieno rotich whose motto is agenda nimbili then we do have mr john karani to stawisha kiss him and he's been supported by team jk so um he might take it not campaigning but let's see dr apopa who is being supported by team k3 whose motto is mapema ndio best we know madam join jao mr fidel moema madam Miriam karanja mr jeremiah dusi then mr pembere mr moses omondi madam purity kanini mr tingos Madam Jennifer, Mr. Wilfred Maloba, and Mr. Mohammed Ibrahim Ali, and many more others. I didn't find the posters. However, we can have this discussion um, on in the supply chain uh, forum. Let us discuss and feel free to sign up and invite others to join and let us change the narrative. Thank you.